Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Friday, August 7th, 11 p.m. Mountain Time, 2020. The collapse of Canada's last intact ice shelf was only a matter of time, according to glaciologists. As well as global warmists, a team of scientists placed research in instruments on the Milne ice shelf in Nunavut last July with plans to return to collect them this summer and study how the stability of the structure has changed. Well, the stability is lacking, clearly. The COVID-19 pandemic put that trip on hold, and I'm being bold. And so we've lost not only the equipment, which is now drifting away in the Arctic Ocean, but also the information that is recorded over the time that it was out. That means we've lost all of the information on global warming. And other salacious topics being picked up here by CBSN. Canada's last intact Arctic ice shelf has collapsed. And Arctic sees the hottest recorded temperature ever. It's all your fault, folks. But is it? Let's check out some of the other data worldwide happening at the same time. And remember the term cherry pickers, because that's what these alarmists are. They're cherry pickers. Antarctic sea ice extent has tracked in the 40 year average all summer or winter if you're down there. So there's that. Not a peep about Antarctica. Did you know that in 2016, Antarctica reached the highest ice extent ever recorded in history? And we are now repeating that. They didn't mention that in the article, though. Tasmania confirms its coldest temperature ever recorded yesterday. But there was no mention of that in the article. The mention was that it's your fault that it, one ice sheet in Canada that collapsed is your fault. Because ice sheets don't collapse, apparently, unless there's global warming. And we're going to get to that at the end of the video, where we learn a little bit about glaciology. Now, summer snow falls on the Russian town of Pevek, just weeks after they were claiming this region was the hottest ever. Well, the earliest winter snow ever <laughs> fell on August 5th, for goodness sakes. <sighs> and I, I've been sharing this, but it's just getting more epic. The amount of Greenland ice loss this year is some of the least amount of ice loss in recorded history. Based on the running model, yes from the surface mass ice balance over at the uh, Greenland center here. You can see when the line moves above the gray baseline that there is much less melt than ever recorded. And last year when this downward spike here that forms on the gray occurred, they claimed that Greenland was melting away forever, which couldn't be further from the truth. Mass ice gain this year was higher than most years and ice loss is lower than most years, meaning the total mass budget will be a record ice gain for Greenland for the year of 2020. Which isn't funny, it's science, but no one on the mainstream is reporting on that data, which is sickening, to be quite honest. Now let's talk about ice calving, also known as glacier calving or iceberg calving. It's the breakup of ice chunks from the edge of a glacier. And this can only happen if glaciers are growing. Now, the mainstream wants you to believe that ice calving is a feature of ice collapse, and it's your fault because of CO2. But the only way you can have a glacier calve into the ocean in the tidal range is if the glacier has been pushing forward because it's growing, and the calving is a natural feature because there is a terminus of all glaciers. And that terminus, once it gets exceeded, the shelf breaks off and there's a new terminus, which then grows out and breaks off. And there's a new terminus that grows out and breaks off. If ice was truly receding, then the entire bay wouldn't be covered in ice breaking off at the tidal edge. It would, the bay would be ice free and the glacier would be receding onto land, which is not happening here in Canada. So not a single glaciologist that has any moxie is willing to step up and actually give the facts is beyond me. 
What is iceberg calving and why does it matter? Well, it matters because the media is using it to pretend that it has something to do with global warming and CO2 when it's simply a natural process of glacial, the glacial cycle of growth, break off and regrowth, period. So please bone up on it. Now, I saw this headline just moments ago before I made the video and I thought I'd share it with you. Massive sunspot is turning towards earth and that can result in major solar flares that can affect electrical systems. Now, apparently this person may watch the channel, but they certainly don't know anything about solar science because sunspot 2770 is not massive. In fact, it's the smallest sunspot visible on the disc through binoculars that you could possibly see. Now, I just told you that it's the smallest visible sunspot possible. So how could that be massive? It couldn't be, and it couldn't be further from the truth. <laughs> so as we break down sunspot 2770 and show you how small it is, let's look at actually large sunspots. There's not a single spot here, maybe this one, that's the same size as 2770, maybe that one, maybe this one, but it's much darker. The umbra and the penumbra are much more pronounced on this in the spot. Now let's look at this sunspot region here, which has over a hundred sunspots contained within. If we were to overlay Jupiter on here, this would be three Jupiter diameters, which would be hundreds of earth diameters. This is a big spot and this spot occurred March 29th in 2001, two solar cycles ago during the max. This was during the grand maximum of our sun. So if you're listening, all you shills that think you know about a giant sunspot, this is a giant sunspot. This one, not so much. This is a pinprick. In fact, it's beta CSO, which is the least dangerous to Earth. C flares only at 10%, M flares at one and X flare at one. Not even a threat to the grid, barely. So why in the world these outlets can publish this garbage is beyond me. But the takeaway here is that most media outlets publish garbage. Simply so you'll click on it. It's called clickbait. And we can see here very limited mixing. Here's positive, negative, and negative. There's no positive, negative, and positive over here. If we saw a blue spot in the middle of this red, well, hello, we would be waiting for some activity, but we're certainly not waiting for any activity or we would be warning you. The magnetogram even is showing composite and intensity very limited. Now, big sunspots 20 years ago, right there. Yes, that's a big sunspot. Little dot like that, no. Not so much, but in the next two or three years, we should be seeing sunspot regions similar to the ones I'm showing you now, and that will be a big sunspot. But until then, nonsense. Now here we just have a, a C flare kicking off from that tiny spot just moments ago. And there is a 10% probability that a C flare will happen. And we've had one. We just had one when I started the show to show you that this is the maximum intensity and this is about, this is going to be C, not even C1, right around C1. And it is earth facing. So in the next 48 to 72 hours, we're going to see what this flare does to the planet, which is probably almost nothing. Once we get into the M2 and 3 range, we're going to see perturbations to the grid. Anything up in the X range, Earth facing, in the coming years will be a shelter in place and preparedness mode type event. But we have the 10% C flare and we've gotten a C flare at C1, but it's nothing to worry about. I'm going to check the telemetry and we'll get back to you in the morning and see what is involved in this flare but it is indicative of cycle, solar cycle 25 and the uptick in the next cycle, which we've been warning about will lead to rolling blackouts worldwide starting soon.
That means you need backup generators, electricity sources, long-term food storage, and a plan. Shelter in place, have a plan. Bug out, have a plan. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when a tiny spot like this is referred to as a gigantic sunspot and we can't even click on it. There it is. So let's go back just to show you the scale of that tiny spot that may be responsible for the C flare. I haven't confirmed it, but according to GOES, we've had a C1 just kick off while we're doing the show. There was a 10% probability of that and nothing like that spot. That flare came from a tiny little spot. Hope you got something out of the video. The sun is awakening like a boom to knowledge. And you've entered solar cycle 25 faster than you can say COVID-19. Share this with like-minded people. Prepare for the ultimatum that we're warning about. If you don't have long-term food storage, if you don't have a bug in or bug out plan, when the solar flare hits the fan and it's just beginning, C1 just happened. What will you do? If the power goes off for a year, will you stay in your home? Will you move out into the woods? What will you do? This is the next step. Now, granted, actually the next step is forced vaccinations, but that's just a stepping stone to the blackouts. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. The sun just kicked off a C1 flare with 10% probability on a tiny little sunspot called 2770, which by the way, is tiny. Be safe folks, we love you. Share this with like-minded people and prepare now for the inevitable. It's coming and we warned you, be safe. And that is a boom. Click on one of the boxes around the boom to knowledge, to gain more knowledge and to expand your repertoire and to attack the shills that attack you.